Hey there YouTube, welcome to the channel. This is Bert's Bike and this is my long-term review on my 2019 Indian Scout 60 with ABS. What I love and hate about the motorcycle as well as my personal thoughts and opinions. Let's jump into it. So I had bought this beautiful Indian Scout 60 about a year ago and this was not actually my first bike. My first bike was a Honda Rebel 300 with ABS. More on that bike later. Stay tuned to the channel to find out why I don't have that bike anymore and why I regret selling it. So this is going to be from a perspective of a brand new street rider. Now a little bit of background, I did ride four wheelers and a little bit of dirt bikes when I was a teenager but nothing on the street. So um, I took my MSF course, I got my Rebel 300, really practiced hard on that bike and then a few months later I was like you know what I'm gonna upgrade and get something that's really great and I found this bike so like anything there are pros and cons to whatever choices you make so for me a motorcycle has got to do three things it's got to perform it's got to look cool and it's got to be reliable those three things so in no particular order, this bike looks awesome. I've gotten so many compliments on this bike at gas stations, at the grocery store, going to Walgreens to pick up little odds and ends for the house. And I get stopped all the time. Everything from, man, what is that bike? To, can my kids watch you drive away in your motorcycle? People are just absolutely drawn to just how this bike looks from kids to adults. So Indian really nails it with the styling on this bike. I think everything looks proportionate. Some people complain about the exhaust being too long. I think it looks fine. But I could see how maybe shortening it up, maybe not going past the tire is, you know, could be a nice aesthetic choice. But I think it looks really good. Um, the, I guess the thing we really should talk about here is the engine casing. I mean, it just looks phenomenal. I think it looks better than the actual Scout casing. And in fact, uh, when I was looking at this bike, I was contemplating going full Scout. But um, I just really liked the way this bike looked. Personally, the only thing I think that could have been different is the speedometer. And it's just really the background of it. So the tan with the red on there uh, is is okay in my opinion for this bike, but it's a blacked out bike. I would have loved to have the speedometer from the Bobber or the Baseline FTR, which I think is the same thing. It just has a black background with white lettering. Um, I think that would have just fit nicely with the whole tone of the bike. I also really like how the speedometer needle and numbers are backlit in red. To me it just adds a nice vibe when you're riding in the evening hours. In a nutshell, the bike looks awesome. So let's get into performance on this bike because there's a lot of good points and also there's a few not so good points. Now the bike is definitely fast, it, it definitely pulls, it definitely has power. I'm not a big numbers guy, I'm more into the way the bike makes me feel and the way the bike responds to my particular riding style. So I ride my bike anywhere I am going by myself. Meetups with friends, grocery store, work, so I commute on this bike. Uh, I take trips on this bike, so I do a lot of things with this bike. So, it will definitely do in town, it will definitely get you on the interstate. Um, it's got plenty of power, um, it handles quite well for a cruiser in my opinion. Um, the feet forward thing it takes a little bit of getting used to, but after you ride on it for a few days, you definitely uh, like that stance. I would have loved to have tried out this bike actually with mid controls. And I know a few people have done that mod to it, but I'm 6'1", so I'm not sure if those would really uh, work for me on this particular motorcycle. But it'll definitely do the interstate in town and whatever you need it to. Um, people have definitely taken this bike way past 100 miles per hour. I don't really live in the triple digits, so 
it does everything I needed to do with a lot in reserve. One thing I think I should mention is that when you're going maybe like 80, 85 on my particular bike, I noticed that the bike would shimmy a little bit at those speeds. And I'm not sure if that is attributed to the way that I had the bike set up. For example, when I got the bike, the handlebars were a little below the midpoint. And after adjusting them about an inch above that point, I felt like the bike felt a little bit more stable and that shimmy was greatly reduced uh, or if not completely eliminated. I never really noticed it after I raised the bars a little bit. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments below if that's normal for this type of motorcycle. So the next thing we need to talk about is the seat. So a lot of guys that own this bike, it's one of the first things they change out. And for me, the seat is just okay. I think it looks great. I think it fits the bike's aesthetic and all that stuff. But I think if you're doing any kind of distance on this bike, it does get a little wearing after a while. And it also tends to cup you into place. So there isn't really a whole lot of movement, um, which is a good and a bad thing, I guess, because you do feel pretty secure, but there's no real movement to uh, get some relief when you're on a longer ride. So the other sore spot on this bike for a lot of people is the suspension. And I personally think the suspension is okay. Um, for some reason, a lot of these bikes, you can hear the suspension moving, which is a little concerning. I actually brought it up to uh, the dealer uh, after owning the bike for a little while, and we walked over and tested and pushed down on different bikes, and you can literally hear the suspension creaking, uh, the front suspension creaking when you're pushing on the forks. And sometimes when you're on a ride and taking a corner, you can feel it adjusting kind of abruptly. And I tend to ride pretty conservatively on the street, so I'm not taking corners and dragging pegs and doing all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, to, to kind of feel it working, it's, it's a little concerning, but I guess it is just what it is. It's whatever they put in there. Um, the rear suspension is adequate, I think, um, but you definitely feel it when you hit bumps. And this is the one thing that I've found out, no matter what... Uh, cruiser I'm riding, cruiser style bike I'm riding, if you kind of, uh, on this bike when you sit on it, you have sort of your back is straight up and down. And when you hit a bump, it tends to send that uh, shock up your spine. And so if you're not careful when you're riding and in really bumpy terrain or avoiding potholes and stuff like that, um, it can really jar you when you're, when, when you're riding around. Now, you know, the, the counter to this is you need to be able to lift up or stand up a little bit to kind of use your legs as the suspension. I think no matter what bike you're on, you should be able to do this. But when you have your feet forward, um, you can do it on this bike, and I do do it on this bike. But you definitely have to learn how to pull yourself up off the seat when you have your feet forward. So all in all, the suspension on this bike I feel is a little subpar, but it isn't um, terribly so. It's just a little subpar. I think it's really due to the fact that when you're, you can feel it sort of adjusting as you're taking a corner or creaking sometimes when you ride the bike up. Um, it's just I know a lot of guys change these out to progressive shocks and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I feel like when you're paying, you know, uh, north of nine, ten thousand dollars on a bike. I think the suspension should still should be adequate. In contrast, my Honda Rebel 300 um, sticker price is 44.9, I think, and um, never noticed any issues like this on that bike. And it's a much cheaper motorcycle. So let's talk about the gearbox on this motorcycle. So. The Scout has six speeds on it. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. And the Scout 60 has one, two, three, four, six. Um, I guess I'm saying it like that because the fifth gear and the sixth gear on the Scout are very, very close. And in essence, you kind of like skip fifth gear and go right to sixth on the Scout 60. 
I'm not sure why they really did that, but the other gears um, on this bike seem to be a little bit taller than what is on the Scout, the regular Scout. So I guess what I mean by that, it feels like you can stay in a gear longer on the five speed, the Scout 60 versus the Scout, which actually is something I really like about uh, this motorcycle. I tend to be drawn to five speed gearboxes for some reason versus six speed gearboxes. I don't know why that is, but most motorcycles that I gravitate to end up having only five speeds. When I test drove this motorcycle, I test drove the Scout 60, the Scout, and the Scout Bobber all on the same day. So I'll have a video coming out soon on what my first impressions on each bike driven back to back are. So stay tuned for that. And what I noticed when I did this back to back is all the gearboxes felt significantly different. When I went in for the test drive, the model that I actually drove was the white one, the white Indian Scout 60. Now compared to my black model, it had a smoother gearbox to my foot. Okay, and then when I drove the Scout Bobber, it was significantly more notchy than the two that I drove. And then when I drove the regular Scout, the gearbox felt really smooth. So there were slight differences between these bikes. The white one had about 300 miles on it. Uh, the black one that I ended up buying had zero miles on it. The regular Scout that I test drove was a rental model and it had about, I want to say 6,000 miles on it. And that gearbox felt really smooth. So I guess what I'm trying to say with all this is that the gearboxes may feel different between uh, just the three Scout 60s or three different Scouts or whatever. So this didn't really concern me. I don't really mind uh, a harder shifting motorcycle like a Harley. I feel like has a really definite positive shift. I just chalked it up to my bike would eventually break in and smoothen out. So the bike did smoothen out at about 1,500 miles to about 2,000 miles, which was great. It was shifting great, first, second, third, to fourth. Now again, what I'm saying is I don't mind even a notchy gearbox or a harder shifting gearbox, but I started to notice that intermittently my gearbox would feel like it was grinding between the fourth and fifth gear. Now if you do some research about this on the Indian Scout forums, that a lot of people experience um, some kind of grabbing or notchiness between the fourth to sixth, I should say, gear of the Scout 60. Now, that's not what I was feeling. Like, nine times out of ten I would feel that notchiness because it does skip a gear and it feels like there's a spacer in that place but sometimes it would feel like it was such a rough shift that it was causing some concern for me. So when I took it to the shop, they assured me everything was fine with the bike, and after living with it for a while, I felt like it was not fine. So needless to say, it was a cause of concern for me, and since I do take my bike on longer trips, I didn't want to be stranded because of a gearbox issue. Um, I did talk to some of my riding buddies that have been riding their whole life and let them ride my bike and they definitely felt that rough shift. So I brought this up to my dealer and they told me that everything was normal on the bike even though they did not test drive it. I actually had to make them test drive the bike and then he told me that it felt like a normal Scout gearbox and that there was nothing to be concerned on with the bike and that the solution was to wear thicker boots when riding the bike now i do wear motorcycle boots are they steel-toed boots no but they are a trusted motorcycle brand that has tons of protection on the boot i'm not a mechanic so i can't tell you whether this is normal behavior for this bike or not but it definitely has ruined some of my riding days and the way that I feel when I'm on the bike and the way that it shifts because it was getting to the point where that fourth to fifth shift 
was sometimes smooth as silk and then sometimes it would feel like the lever was kicking back on my foot. So I'm not sure if that's just the way the bike is or is a characteristic of this bike, but the dealer did tell me that if anything happened to the bike in the future that they would back me up on, on it and they have record of me registering the complaint. Now, I have a bit of a problem with this because it doesn't really instill confidence in you when you're riding a bike and you shift into a different gear and you feel the lever smack back on your foot. It was definitely giving me some anxiety about the bike failing. And in fact, one of my riding buddies said, oh, I had a bike that did that and it left me stranded hundreds of miles away from my house. I did call Indian customer service about this and they did set me up an appointment with another tech just to get a second opinion. However, the wait list was a month long. And if that they didn't find anything wrong with the bike, in their opinion, that I would have to pay for the diagnostic. Other than that, the only negative thing that happened was I guess my starter needed to be replaced and it happened the day I bought the bike. I drove the bike from the dealership to work and when I got off of work at about 9 p.m. I, start, I tried to start my bike and it would not start. It just made a clicking noise but the engine was definitely not turning over. So uh, I managed to try it a few times and eventually the bike did crank up again. Also uh, the dealer's service on this was really great. They um, uh, sent uh, a trailer over to my house to pick up the bike and they ended up replacing the starter under warranty. Apparently after doing some research that there was a run of the starters that were faulty from the factory and um, I guess uh, mine was one of those. So moving on, the next thing we need to talk about is the clutch feel and engagement and adjustment. So the Indian Scout particularly and I'm not sure if this is all Indians, but they typically have a harder pull than most bikes that I've ridden. So I am coming from uh, having experience on Honda, uh, Kawasaki, and some Harley. And I do find the clutch pull actually a bit harder than the Harleys that I've tried. And the Harleys that I've ridden were the Sportster models. So that doesn't really bother me too bad but it does get a little bit fatiguing when you're at uh, like stop and go traffic having to hold that clutch in and I'm not really one of those riders who likes to shift into neutral a whole lot when you're in traffic um, I will do it if a car is already behind me but if there's nobody behind me I'll typically keep it keep my clutch um, pulled um, so I can get out of the way if I need to so the other thing about this clutch is most clutches free play on a lot of bikes that I've ridden is about uh, two to three millimeters on Honda and Kawasaki I believe it's right around there. So the clutch free play on this bike is one is 0.5 I think to 1.5. So literally you want about a millimeter of free play. Uh, on the clutch which is very very thin and if you don't have a feeler gauge or you don't have a millimeter ruler um, I guess you can ballpark it by using uh, a standard credit card could be used for that and you'll probably have to do this uh, a few times on your own because the cables on these bikes are known for stretching um, in 4,000 miles I've had to adjust my K my clutch cable about three or four times and after doing it that many times I just broke down and bought a Barnett braided clutch cable and replaced it with that which was uh, one of the best things I did for the bike actually. Um, it just made it feel way more consistent and way more positive feeling. So shout out to Barnett clutch cables. So for me to want to keep a bike long term it definitely has to hit the three criteria that we talked about in the beginning of the video it's got to look good, it's got to perform, and it's got to be reliable. So in my opinion, the Scout definitely hits the first two on the head. The reliability aspect, I will never know because I didn't keep the bike. I ended up trading it in to a dealership 
for another bike that I fell in love with. And that's how the story goes, I guess, with motorcycles. And I guess the takeaway from all this is if you're buying a motorcycle and the dealership lets you test drive motorcycles, you should buy the exact one that you test drive. Don't try the blue one and buy the yellow one of the same model. Buy the one that you test drive. If you're going to switch to another color, test drive that one too, even though it's the same quote-unquote bike. A couple other small things. The paint on this thing really scratches easy. I think that Indian does a great job with their matte finishes, but for some reason this particular color, this gloss black, seems to scratch really easy. So the last thing is there's really no storage on this bike, which is fine. A lot of bikes don't have places to put things. But if you're planning on doing longer trips, you're going to have to invest in some kind of a saddlebag system and or the luggage rack. So you can see here how much stuff I've gotten on the bike with just the luggage rack. It's definitely worth it, and if you know how to tie things down, it's invaluable. Even with all this said, I really think the Scout 60 is a banging motorcycle, and I also think it's probably the better value versus the regular Scout. Well, thanks so much for tuning in and listening to me ramble on about my Indian Scout. If you're wondering what bike I ended up with instead of the Indian Scout 60, it's going to be in another video, so stay tuned for that. All right, guys, I'm out. Thanks so much.